You've come out of the warmth of the office to check out this stream because in this whole area of Otatahi Christchurch, of course, water is very significant. Tamare, what is the history of this, this stream? Well, look, the history of this stream is it's part of the Avon or the Otakaro. But um, in Christchurch, around here is a suburb called Waimairi. And it's confused everyone where the Mai Waimairi stream is. It's actually not a stream. The, the word properly is Ngā Waimairo. And Mairo means water channels. And the Ngā makes it a plural, or Ka Waimairo, Ngā, if you, it's a southern dialect. So between the Oraki Power stream, which runs over that side of the university, and everything in the middle to the Wairarapa stream, which is on the far side, the northern branch, all of these streams in between are Ngā Waimairo which is all the channels in between. <laughs> That's the best translation. So this is one of them here, but if you look at the early maps, there's lots of channels and lots of waterways around here. I, I suspect some of them are covered, up, covered over now. But this is just one of the channels and streams. So Waimairi isn't really one stream. It's a whole bunch of streams in between. And I guess that's an example of how place names can change over time. Hey, how about we go and check out other parts of the Avon? You've come to another tributary of the Avon River. Tell us about this one, Tamare. It's, um, this is the, the northern branch, which our lot, sorry, our tribe called the Wairarapa. And in our traditions, the spring is called Waifetu, which is further up. Now, the, um, the reason why they've got their names is our tribe, Ngaita, who came from the Wairarapa region in the North Island. So when they came down, they brought the names with them. Wairarapa, obviously from the Wairarapa in the North Island. But if you're in, um, in the Wellington area inside the bay, there's a Waifetu. There's a place called Waifetu. Waifetu College. I think there's a college there called Waifetu. Right. So that was one of our villages as well. So we brought them here and put them on the Avon. Um, which really isn't all that different from the, De the Deans brothers bringing the name Avon. Properly, I think it's pronounced Avon, right. the yeah. Avon River okay. here from their homeland. So really, it's both the same type of system going on. And our lot simply brought the names down. White Arup is the name of the stream here. One of the springs is called Waifetu, and they're both from their homelands up in the Wellington White Arup region. Interesting thing about the Waifetu is it's named after a really important marine battle. Sorry, a, a battle that our tribe had with their enemies in the North Island before they left. It's one of the reasons why we left the North Island. Um, which is kind of like Wellington. If you watch Wellington, Duke of Wellington, you'd have to have a Waterloo somewhere, <laughs> which is in Lower Hutt now. <laughs> you know, Waterloo, Waterloo Railway Station. No different from Marlborough. In Nelson over the way in Trafalgar, you, you always get place names in a sequence. So, You've looked at a couple of the tributaries to the Avon River, which is right here in front of you. Crystal clear water, it's looking rather spectacular. Tamare, what's the history of this Avon River? Oh, it's Ngaitahu name is all Takaro. Um, and that's an official name from the Ngaitahu Claim Settlement Act. When the tribe settled with the, with the Crown, we made sure that some of our place names were on here. So it's properly all Takaro Avon River. Um, and really this place was important for, um, this was a food gathering place. We know Christchurch was a swamp land, right. but a lot of our elders from at home, Tuiwi, they came here and they collected food here. Usually eels, inanga, they had a particular type of flounder because of the pattern on it that they got here. But kana kana, which is a lamprey, it's really nice to eat um, and they got them along here further up around near the streams but this was a food gathering place as well. So Tamara, how is the Otakaro River also significant for later on when Europeans came here? I think it was used to transport goods up and down. They used to take them as far as the Bricks which is an area just up around Kilmore Street and um, they transported all their goods up here so that they could build. So. Obviously transport's a functional reason for the use of the river. The, um, but it's got an aesthetic element. People use this river right through 
the water was clean, so they obviously used the water for drinking water, but they used it right through into the 1920s for bathing around here. Um, so it was a place where the Christchurch public bathed, which is really quite interesting. People bathed in rivers and swam in rivers in Canterbury until recently. And um, I'd like to know how many people do that these days because the water's just terrible in Canterbury. But this was a, a bathing river. It's, it's still relatively good except for the toxins that come from just urban living now. So the river's been, has been, always been important and it was simply used for transport, goods up and down. But the river was obviously much bigger then. I think there were drownings here as well mm. during, the, during the floods. Some people drowned crossing the river. Right. And, um, but they're going to make it into an aesthetic centre point for the rebuild of the city. That's probably a good decision. Rather than just a river that goes through the city, people live along here and have their lunch in the business district will focus on the river. Yeah. And people will pay attention. It'd be interesting. I suspect this will be cleaner than any other river in the Canterbury region. Which would be fantastic yeah. to see. Thanks, Tamare. Right. Thank you.